Hey everyone, I'm David Wade. And I'm Lisa Hughes. Thank you to everyone who is joining us for the DAV 5K this weekend. We're so proud to support the DAV and veterans across Massachusetts. And we'd like to show you some of the stories that we've covered over the past few months here at WBZ News that spotlight veterans in our local communities. Take a look. A show of support for a local veteran, volunteers coming together to help put a new roof on her family's home. Brianna's back now in studio with more on this, Brianna. Kate and Liam, Admira DePina is a former staff sergeant in the U.S. Army. She did a tour in Iraq and another in Afghanistan, so she was excited to settle down in her new home. But within six months, the roof began leaking, so she reached out to Operation Homefront, a nonprofit that helps military families around the country. Owens Corning and New Bedford-based Kudo Construction covered the cost of the repairs, material, and labor, which was an estimated $21,000. And they tell us you cannot put a price on helping veterans in need. And Edmina says she is feeling all of the love and support. A construction crew hard at work building a new roof for a deserving homeowner. Did uh, almost 10 years in the Army. I uh, did one tour to Iraq and one tour to Afghanistan. And I was medically retired back in 2018. A former staff sergeant in the U.S. Army, Admira DePina recently moved to Randolph. When she had first moved in, she had quite a few renovations that she had to get done. And six months in, she found out that her roof was leaking. So she reached out to Operation Homefront, a nonprofit helping military families around the country. We often say um, our service members served us in our time of need, so now it's our turn to serve them in their time of need. And this is our way of paying it forward and paying it back. Together with Owens Corning and Kudo Construction, they were able to give Admira a new roof. It's really great to give back to especially a single mother with her child and really take this off her plate, not to have to worry about it, so it's great. I mean, this is a lot, and this is money that can go towards something else, so it means a lot. Words cannot express how thankful we, my family um, and I are. Kudo Construction estimates the cost of labor and materials for the new roof at $21,000. But they say giving back to those who have served is priceless. The military's got us covered, and in this situation, we're able to give back, and we got them covered. When we dedicate ourselves to serve, we don't really want anything in return. Um, and when someone does offer something in return, it means a lot. Oh, Speaking for me and all the veterans out there. For WBZ News, I'm Rachel Holt. All new tonight, a 96-year-old veteran who survived a brutal battle during World War II is on a mission to salute the lieutenant who saved his life. Private Anthony Grasso is alive because of a lieutenant who died shielding him from a bomb. And now he wants to say thank you one more time. WBZ's Bill Shields met him today. After 75 years. He's 96 years old now, but that fall of 1944 still burns brightly for Anthony Grasso and the young lieutenant who saved his life. Artillery fire and all the things. Next thing I know, I'm flying through the air. This is 18 year old Anthony Grasso in the summer of 1944. And this is Lieutenant Frank DeBose of South Carolina. They were paired together. Anthony was his radio man, and they were thrust into one of the deadliest regions of the European theater, the Hurtgen Forest. Unbelievable. I don't know how many soldiers survived. The soldiers lived in dirt holes to avoid the Nazi artillery, but it was a howitzer shell that hit Grasso and DeBose just as the lieutenant pushed Anthony away to grab the radio. He took the blunt of the blow, and I, I can never forget it. Frank DeBose died that day in Europe and is now buried in his hometown in South Carolina. And Anthony says he's running out of time to say thanks, so he's going to South Carolina. He wants to go and, and visit this man that saved his life. I'd like to pay my respects for what you've done. So on the 27th, 96-year-old Anthony Grasso will travel to South Carolina for one last salute to his friend, Lieutenant DeBose. They'd like to take as many family members as they can, so they've established a GoFundMe page. Of course, it's called Saving Private Grasso. To Norwood, I'm Bill Shields, WBZ News. Wow. With the U.S. pulling out of Afghanistan, as many as 200,000 veterans 
could be leaving the military over the next year and looking for new careers. WBZ's Paula Evans shows us some of the resources now in place to help with that transition. 28-year-old Miles Kaufman is an MBA candidate at Southern Methodist University. On his resume, three tours in Afghanistan with the 75th Ranger Regiment. He's one of many veterans transitioning off of the battlefield and into the civilian job market. I think it's difficult as a veteran to translate all the applicable skills that we do have into terms that are easily understood by some of these hiring managers. Finding a career is even more difficult in the uncertain post-lockdown economy. So Kaufman enlisted the help of American Corporate Partners, a national nonprofit organization that pairs veterans with corporate mentoring, networking, and career advice. Mentors from more than 100 companies have helped more than 20,000 vets so far. With your help, I've landed a job as a software engineer at Microsoft. How crazy is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is not goodbye. This is on to the next journey. ACP founder Sid Goodfriend says the average age of vets they help is 38. They're not looking for entry level jobs, but some return without college degrees, posing an even bigger challenge. You can't even get an interview in most companies without a four year degree. It would be wonderful if companies would consider military experience, in some cases, if the skills are there, in lieu of a four year degree. Kaufman advises fellow vets to take advantage of resources like ACP as they embark on their new mission. ACP also helps spouses of active duty service members. They often have trouble finding jobs because they've had to move frequently. You can find out more about them by visiting our website, cbsboston.com. Paula Eben, WBZ News. Well, we are here for this. A World War II veteran went back to his roots. The Middleton man was a renowned military diver. And today he took a trip to inspire the next generation. WBZ's Nick Giovanni was there. In the water is where 94-year-old Douglas Bryant spent nearly a quarter of a century in the Navy. I haven't made a dive since 1958. A humble member of the greatest generation, the retired Navy senior chief engineman who made five war patrols aboard the USS Sea Dog during World War II made a trip from Middleton to Rockport Wednesday morning, returning to the water to spend some time with the state police underwater recovery unit. I certainly won't be telling them how to do their job today. Bryant sat along Steel Derrick Quarry and shared stories with state troopers about life as a submariner and eventually a deep sea diver. Oh boy, when that guy got on the bottom and the grasshoppers took off, he was like a wild man. And it's a real honor to meet somebody that, that did it a long time before, uh, before most of the guys here were born. You know, back in the 50s, the things they did is the reason we're able to do what we do today because they did the testing and got the technology and, and did all the, you know, the dive tables for us so we can actually do it safely today. Spending the day with the dive team as they went about their training, Bryant noted just how far some of that technology has come. But he also offered a few words of wisdom. If there's one piece of advice you're going to impart on these guys, what's it going to be? Oh, I don't know. I guess, I guess enjoy life, I guess. That's, that's all. Don't be a complainer, you know. Uh, try to be constructive. And while he was here, Bryant was handed a patch, unofficially making him an honorary member of the team. Reporting in Rockport, Nick Giovanni. WBZ News. Wow. Amazing. Those are words to live by. Really, Enjoy truly. life and don't be a complainer. I know he said that, you know, he wasn't going to tell them how to do their jobs, but I think they walked away with a lot of lessons from him. It was a great day. He's a showstopper and mm -hmm. a traffic mover. A crossing guard in Needham is getting praise for his incredible dedication to keeping kids safe. And as I discovered, his background prepared him for duty. Twice a day, the fluorescent vest comes out. The white gloves slip on. David Pinkham puts on his game face and fires himself up. I said to myself, all right, Dave, game on. Come on, let's do this. Let's get this traffic moving. You're all set. Outside of Newman Elementary School in Needham, at drop-off and pickup. Is that kid coming? It's Pinkham on patrol. There's six different lanes of traffic that's going out here. You got one, you know, two, and then you got... Uh, three, four, five, and six. Pointing, running, waving, 
impressing. Mr. Pinkham is the best crossing guard I've ever seen. He keeps traffic moving. He's great with the kids. He's he's dancing out there in the streets every day, and it's it's uh, the best. He sort of has a dancey way of doing the um, helping with people cross. Dancy David hasn't been a crossing guard long. So where did he learn to move kids and cars with military precision? Well, in the military. The job was to um, hunt Soviet submarines. It was an anti-submarine warfare uh, squadron. Pinkham was in the U.S. Navy. This is him. His Cold War job was to direct air traffic on the tarmac. It's very challenging because you had so much going on around, and you got to pay attention. There's so many squadrons of helicopters, jets, um, P3s. In 1981, the Navy's magazine profiled Pinkham. The article was about his infectious energy directing planes, how his enthusiasm made him a favorite of Navy pilots. So you had this back then? Yes, sir. I don't know why, David. I, I don't. I... How does working as a crossing guard over here compare to your work in the Navy? It's, um, it's, it's pretty much the same. Now it's buses instead of bombers, strollers instead of squadrons. But the 60-year-old is just as serious. That's not fit for man nor beast, David. It's not. He works outside of the school, outside school hours. But David Pinkham is teaching kids that if something is worth doing, it's worth doing well. What do you want people to know about you and your job? I'd like people to know that, hey, this guy cares. And what I do out here is I care. Wow. He does care, and he is a great guy. He told me, by the way, that he was a big disco dancer. <laughs> I'm not kidding, when he was in the Navy. And he always keeps a song in his head while he's directing the traffic. Well, he obviously has the moves, but I also love knowing his backstory. Yeah. Because clearly, this is in his blood. This makes yeah. him tick, and people really do appreciate it. There are other dancing crossing guards, but this guy is special because all he cares about is the safety. He's taking it seriously. Very cool. Great story. Thank you. A special honor for a Patriots fan ahead of tomorrow's NFL draft. He has worked tirelessly during the pandemic to help thousands of military families, and now he's getting a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity thanks to the Kraft family. Nick Giovanni has the details. Don Cox and his wife, Lindsay, loaded up their truck Tuesday morning for a road trip to Cleveland. Next stop, the NFL draft. It's a bucket list moment. Cox was tapped to read the Patriots' first-round pick Thursday night which he learned when he got a phone call from Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Mr. Kraft called me and asked me if I'd like to announce the first pick, and I told him I was speechless. So for once in my life, I had nothing to say. His path to the draft started in the parking lot outside Gillette Stadium, where the Marine veteran has been tackling food insecurity among veterans and military families throughout the pandemic as president of USA Veterans and Military Support Foundation. I'm just taking, enjoy, taking in the moment. I mean. We've been here 58 weeks and it's been nonstop, two or three in the morning till seven, eight at night, seven days a week. And it's, uh, this is the first break we've really taken. According to Cox, the foundation's program, Food for Vets, has provided over 22 million meals, made up of 47 million pounds worth of food to families across 10 states in the last year, using the parking lot at Patriot Place to distribute in a warehouse borrowed from the crafts to call their headquarters. The thing that was most evident in this pandemic was that the safety nets we thought were in place weren't in place. Now hitting the road for Cleveland, Cox sees his upcoming trip to the NFL draft podium as a special platform to raise awareness about food security concerns during the pandemic and beyond. It will continue on. There is always going to be a need for uh, for food security with our, with our veterans and our military families. And we're hoping to make this a more a uh, robust program going forward to be able to help them across the state. On a lighter note, when I asked him if there was a certain name he was hoping to read off when the Patriots pick is in, certain player or position, a cock said he's a fan. He'll take whoever the Patriots get. Reporting in Foxborough, Nick Giovanni, WBZ News. Tonight, we are here for this, a war hero honored with a gift that will help him get around a little easier. Students at the Greater Lawrence Technical School have been working for months on something for Quincy Marine veteran Scott Shepard. It is a new car. WBZ's Paula Evan joins us now, and Paula, charity helped to make this happen. Yeah, David and Lisa, the group Second Chance Cars donated the vehicle, and the students who are part of the automotive collision repair class got it ready for today's presentation. There it is. 
Pretty sweet. Their sophomores repaired the rear body panel, assembled a new taillight, and installed a new battery. Shepard, who served in the Marine, says this gift could not have come at a better time. Thank you so much. Everyone that was involved in this process um, over the past seven months, um, it's been a little difficult during the pandemic. I lost my vehicle being laid off from work for a few months. Um, but everything got turned around in a very quick fashion. And it was because of this program and everyone around here that, was, that has been involved in this that has made this happen on this day. Um, I couldn't be more grateful. As for the students, they say projects like this one inspire them to do better in school and to do better in the community. David and Lisa, win, win, win all the way around. No question. Fantastic. Their work paying off in such a wonderful way. What a project that is. They yeah. learn about fixing the car. They learn about helping others. Yep. Just what a fantastic story.